The Red Hand of Ulster is a famous symbol from Northern Ireland, and it'd be hard to find a more dramatic object to put on a flag. But the roots of the hand are tied to a mysterious origin story that may go back as far as pagan times in Ireland. The icon itself is quite literally a red hand, palm facing the viewer, fingers pointed upwards. Usually it's a right hand, but in a few variations you'll see a left hand used. As a documented heraldic emblem, the red hand first appeared in the 13th century. Specifically, in 1264, a Hiberno-Norman knight named Walter de Burgh was named first Earl of the Earldom of Ulster. This earldom encompassed lands that had once been the Irish overkingdom of Uled, whose symbol was the red hand. Now, being a very clever boots, Walter combined the red hand icon with a red cross on a gold field, which was his personal heraldry. The hand was drawn on a white shield to make it stand out. This design has been preserved as the traditional Ulster province flag we see today, not to be confused with the white Ulster banner, also known as the flag of Northern Ireland. Now, historians don't really know the exact origin or reasoning for how the symbol of the hand came to be. The kingdom it was associated with, Uled, is also shrouded in legend and mystery. As a result, many stories depicting the hand's origin have evolved. One basic origin is that the hand is a Christian symbol called the Dextera Dei, literally the right hand of God. Seen in other forms in other countries, this icon represents the will of God and his blessing upon a favored group. From a medieval warrior's standpoint, flying this banner represented your faith that God was on your side and would favor you with victory if you were worthy. That's pretty dramatic in and of itself. It's easy to imagine knights clashing shields with a tattered banner fluttering in the wind, right? But the most popular myth of the Red Hand's origin is even older and a bit more intense. According to tradition, this event took place long before the arrival of St. Patrick. The hero was a war leader named Hermann O'Neill. According to legend, after a time of chaos, the rulership of Northern Ireland was in question. Not one clan chief had a clear claim to the throne. Thus, it was proclaimed by a council of druids that the king would be determined by a contest a boat race. The first warrior to touch the shore would prove his capability as well as the loyalty and strength of his men. This man would be named High King. Now, many great chieftains entered the race, each with a boat full of mighty warriors, and among them was O'Neill. The chieftains took to their longboats, and the race began over the North Sea. Oars smashed into the green waves like a mighty storm of wood. Each captain rode with his men. Muscles burned and tore as the galleys flew over the ocean faster than dolphins. On they rode non-stop for a whole day until they glimpsed the sun setting over a stony shore, green mountains in the distance. O'Neill's and one other galley led the pack, neck and neck, pushing for the final yards. Closer and closer the shore came. But as O'Neill's muscles screamed out in anguish, he realized his galley was falling farther and farther behind his competitor. On the shore, you could just make out the shadowy forms of the druids, waiting to see who would win. O'Neill sensed his loss was all but declared. Ah, but O'Neill was a cunning and bold warrior. Without hesitation, he pulled out his sword and raised it above his head, much to the confusion of his men. Then in a flash of steel, O'Neill brought the sleek blade down on his own left wrist, severing his hand with a ghastly swoosh. Before anyone had time to react, O'Neill grasped his severed hand in his other and hurled it at the shore. Soaked in dark red blood, the hand landed with a soft thud on the rocks right before the waiting druids. They each nodded in approval. Now the chief in the leading galley jumped ashore and immediately protested. He had actually landed his boat first. He should be the winner. But the chief druid merely smiled. Leaning forward, he said, Aye, you landed first. But O'Neill has shown not only courage and cunning, but the one quality a true king must possess. What's that? The chieftain demanded. The willingness to sacrifice yourself for a greater cause, the seer replied. So sheepishly, all the other warriors realized they had been bested, and O'Neill was declared High King. With a little embellishing, that's the story, and it's pretty amazing, right? Any chance something like that actually happened? Sadly, probably not. There is no clear record of anyone in the line of the Irish chiefs named Hermon O'Neill, and the first time the story was written down, as far as we know, was in the 17th century. 
The O'Neill clan actually does trace its lineage back to a legendary figure named Neil of the Nine Hostages, and it may be that this legend was once considered a part of his personal saga. We'll probably never know. However, by the 14th century, the real-life O'Neills had formed several Irish royal dynasties, each a force to be reckoned with, and each using the Red Hand as part of their coat of arms. So, maybe that Red Hand really did inspire some greatness, hmm? What do you think? Is this a great story? Is it a fragment of history? Is it both? Let us know in the comments. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about the O'Neills and about ancient Irish legend and history, check out the book recommendations we have below. In the meantime, have a fantastic day, my friends.